Guys, in this video, we're going to be talking about expectation and reality when booking a cruise. Stay tuned for more. Guys, I'm not going to lie, this has been a video I've wanted to do for so long because as a new cruiser myself, you know, it's something that I thought would be really beneficial to people that have cruised and have loads of experience of cruising, but also I know there's a lot of people on my channel that have never cruised before and they're looking to book their first cruise or they have booked their first cruise and they're still waiting for, obviously, it to go ahead because of everything that's going on. So I just thought I would do a video based on what my expectations and thoughts were before booking this cruise, well, before going on my first cruise, to then the actual reality of it. And what it was like when I was on board and what I thought once I got off the ship. And yeah, and, and, and my expectations versus reality. And I think that's a really important thing, especially if you're a new cruiser, because a lot of people go into this not knowing what to expect. Like myself personally, I didn't know what to expect. I did my entire family. So yes, let's go through this. Right, so before we actually go through like some of the points that I thought what I, what my expectations were to reality can I just say like cruising was never really like a highly rated thing to me before booking Connor's uh, mum and dad had run on a cruise and they said they would never go on a cruise again said it was awful and um, we had family like family friends who had been on cruises and they said they would never go on a cruise again and then I'd watched I'd done the dreaded thing of watching documentaries and you know as we all know cruise has always been targeted by the media it, it still is now. So as you can imagine, you know, booking the cruise was a bit of a worry. I'm not going to lie. Also, just a quick one to add as well, guys. It wasn't me personally that actually wanted to go on the cruise. My nana, um, bless her, she's, you know, she's her dream has always been to go on a cruise. And I know, and I know for a fine fact, she had a lot of these thoughts that I did before going as well, because we spoke about them. And her dream was to cruise. And my nana is uh, going blind in one eye. She has been for years, bless her. And she really wanted, she found the news out in 2019 and she wants to enjoy life as much as she can before obviously she loses vision in one eye. And um, and yeah, and basically we came across the idea of a cruise and originally it was just me and my nana going. But then me and my nana discussed that we wouldn't be able to share a room. So then I said, well, I'll take Stevie and uh, and then and then my mum can go in her room. So that's how Stevie and my mum end up coming. And then we were going for a week and then we ended up going for two. Well, I ended up going for two and then I ended up going for a week. So it, originally, I didn't, oh, it's not that I didn't want to go on the cruise, but originally it wasn't my plan to go on the cruise. I'm not going to lie, there was barely any talking about booking it or anything. It was pretty much Nana, you know, you know, she told us exactly what was going on. She was like, I really want to go on this cruise. I really want to do some cruises. And I said, well, let's just do it. Let's just book it. And I'll never forget, I was walking, I was on a jog. And, uh, and she rang us and she was like, yeah, Dan, do you know what? I've looked at my money. I want to do it. And I rang P&O you know, pretty much immediately and just booked it. I literally didn't even research. Just didn't even research. I spoke to a woman on the phone. Um, I think her name was Andrea from the P&O call centre. And, um, and we spoke. She built the holiday for me all on the phone. Um, and I was like, yeah, we'll do that one. I said, I want to go somewhere nice and warm, somewhere where the sea's calm. And she recommended the Mediterranean because of the time of year. And she recommended um, starting from uh, Malta because obviously the sea is a lot calmer. And then we just booked it. I didn't research it, didn't do anything. Just booked it. <laughs> Which is not like me, I can tell you that. It's not like me, but obviously it was from a nana. And we paid the balance in full and it was just there, bang, bang, done. It wasn't until after we booked it then I started to do some research and firstly, you know, you, ha you Google stuff and you have these visions of what you think things are going to be like and, you know, I've never done a cruise so I was thinking, oh my god, the sea is going to be awful, it's going to be rocking side to side, you know, you think the worst, you, you absolutely think the worst. So I'm going to go down these five options, like the five, the five things that um, were big things for me and then we'll talk about, you know, the thoughts and the expectations to the reality. First one, number one, is cost. Now, the cruise, you look at these holidays, you, you look you look at the websites and you see, you know, 799 per person, 899 per person, a thousand pound per person, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, God, you can even go into the tens of thousands per person. And you think you get, and you think to yourself, oh my God, that's so expensive. Now, the thing we're cruising, and what I've found from like doing so much research on this like over the last two years is the fact is you can get cheap cruises and you can get really really expensive cruises so for example I'm looking at a cruise for me and Stevie in August in the Baltics 
and it's a 14 night cruise and for an insane cabin, for me and Stevie, it's £2,499 I think it is. That's two weeks on a cruise. Now, you guys will know if you've been on a cruise, that cost, that total cost, includes full board. So that, well actually, you could say it's kind of all inclusive, but it's not. I'll explain. So with, with for example, with P&O, your, your cost, so the, your your original cost, depending on if you do early saver or um, or just the, the price. What I'm, I don't really want to go into the early savers and stuff because this video will be about an hour long. So we'll just go on the base rate. We'll just go on the base rate of 2,500, we'll just say. So that's basically all your meals while you're on board. So the buffets, the restaurants, um, there is on some ships, but in fact all the ships, there's these extra restaurants where you can pay to go in. But basically, you'll not go hungry. So for that, 2500 includes all your food. It doesn't include drinks, but you can do a drinks package on board. And depending on what drinks package you want to do, depends on what you want. So you've got the kids package, which... It, when I went, it was sixty pounds. It might have gone up. I don't. I don't. I've not. I've not looked at the prices recently. And then it's something like a hundred and something pound per week. Um, but that's everything. So that is everything. So in regards to like spending money on board, obviously you take your spending money on board. But you literally can decide on how much of a budget you want. You know, when I went with Stevie, we were using this as a very, very budget trip. Obviously, before booking it, when you look at the cost and you think. Wow, this has cost me, you know, 2,500. You instantly think, well, oh my God, I'm gonna need all this spending money. And you think to yourself, wow, it's so expensive. Like that, that's, that was what my original thought was. However, guys, I'm not gonna lie. When I got on board, I was actually really surprised at how cheap everything was. Everything on board, apart from medication, which I got really stung with, apart from medication, everything was quite reasonably priced. The same prices what that you would get in England, you know, walking around, you know, you, the same prices of what you would get, you know, in any normal bar. I didn't think it was overpriced. I didn't think it was too expensive. I thought it was really fair. You guys let me let me know in the comments what your thoughts. Just to clarify that again, just because I know it was a bit muddled because I was going on about meals and stuff. When you actually add everything up, yeah, it might cost you a little bit more than what a, a normal, a, a, you know, like a normal holiday to Europe might cost. But if you think about a cruise, you're visiting all these different countries and obviously you would need money when you're at the port but on board the ship it's actually really fair i think it is anyway but you guys let me know in the comments what your thoughts are number two it's probably only relevant if you're traveling with kids but this was such a big thing for me because i was traveling with stevie now we had never been on a ship before bear in mind we had never been on a ship before so i was thinking what's there going to be for kids is the kids is there going to be kids clubs and stuff so I did a little bit of research, and yes, there's kids clubs, and wow, the kids clubs on the website looked amazing, and I was thinking, oh, well, at least Stevie's going to be chuffed, because I think I think he could join the uh, the teenagers one, which was 13 to 17, so I thought he's going to be really happy, blah, 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 but then I was thinking to myself, actually, is there going to be other kids on board, like what, you know, is, is the, this cruise big for families, and then I started going on Facebook groups and stuff, and I uh, quickly found out that... Um, you know, the kids clubs were brilliant. In fact, actually, I think the kids clubs were better than some of the clubs that we had for adults. Then we got on the ship, and oh my god, Stevie absolutely loved the kids club. Like, I'm not joking, Stevie can't wait to go back on a cruise, primarily just to go at the kids clubs, because he absolutely loved the kids clubs. He met so many amazing kids, so many kids that he still talks to now, and they had such a good time. The staff on board were amazing with them. Honestly, it's some days, Stevie would disappear. We would like, you know, on when we would get back to the ship, Stevie would like, we would have our meal. It was usually about eight o'clock we would have our meal. And I'd be looking at me watching it, it'd be like half 11, quarter to 12 at night. I'd be thinking, where the hell is Stevie? And I would go for a walk, like around the ship, and I would see him in the kids club. And I don't know what time, I think it's 1am. I'm sure it's 1am, the kids club's open till. Or it might have been on our cruise. I know, I'm, so, for some reason, 11 o'clock rings a bell, but they were open really late. And, you know, the kids had such a great time. The, the, it was actually even the case where the kids could have their meals together. So, if you're, if you're like, obviously in a couple and your kids don't really want to have meals with you, I can tell you now, Stevie probably didn't want to have meals with me, probably rather have meals with, with his friends. But um, obviously he knew I probably wouldn't go in on my own and have food myself, so that's probably the reason why I came and had food with me. But if you are on that option of saying, oh, well, you know, the kids can go and have food with their friends, 
there's an option for that because a lot of the kids did it. A lot of the kids went to the buffet and, you know, ate God knows what uh, from the buffet. Not a very healthy option, obviously, you know. But um, like if Stevie had his way, he would just eat chips and chips and bread and stuff. <laughs> he wouldn't eat anything healthy. But, um, or a balanced diet, I should say. Number three is the formal evenings. Now, before going, I was very worried about the formal evenings and I was very worried about the dress code because... Ugh, Literally, with if, if you go on any of the Facebook groups or if you go on any anywhere online, the formal evenings are like highly respected. Like a lot of people love the formal evenings on these cruises, and you know, people, you know, people really get excited about getting dressed up in their suits and stuff. I wasn't as worried about that. It was more about the dress code before going on. So before going on the cruise, I thought, oh my god, you know, what is it going to be like? Is it going to be? where we're going to have to wear, you know, jeans all the time, are we not, we're going to have to be careful of what we wear, you know, how many, you know, how big is your suitcase going to have to be, you're going to have to pack loads of stuff, because you're going to have to have different clothes for different nights, everything is optional on board, guys, so, um, there's certain restaurants on board that will follow the rules for that evening, so there will be a restaurant, maybe that you might not be able to go to, because that restaurant is being used for that type of event, for example, for formal evenings, if you're not in formal wear, you would be asked to not go into the formal restaurant that night and you would probably have to go to the buffet. And guys, there's nothing wrong with doing that. I met so many people on board that didn't even bring a suit on board and were just like, oh no, we don't get dressed up. We just go to the uh, buffet on formal evenings. And then some people were saying, oh no, we, you know, dressed up, suit and booted. Me and Stevie had both. But what we ended up finding is we, we had four formal evenings on our two week cruise. Or was it five? It was either four or five. We didn't go to one just because we were just, you know, we were, we just wanted to have a glam down day for one day. We just wanted to glam down, not be dressed up in a suit. And we ended up going, we ended up uh, booking a specialty dining restaurant. And yeah, it was, it was, it was amazing. Honestly, it was absolutely amazing. And you know, that's the thing guys, there's no like class system on board. It's not, if you're not dressed in a suit, you look differently upon. So you guys do what you want to do. If you don't want to be getting dressed up every night, don't get dressed up every night. If you want to get dressed up every night, dress up every night. That's the thing with cruises. I think a lot of people think that there's like, you know, rule one, rule two, rule three. It's honestly guys, it's not like that. It's, you know, you do what you want to do. My expectation to my reality was so different when it comes to this. My expectation was, oh my God, dressed up every night. And the actual reality was, is we didn't have to dress up every night and it was bloody amazing. And when we did dress up, it really felt special and I really enjoyed it. And it was so nice seeing everyone else dressed up as well. Number four, guys, is the food on board. Now, depending on what cruise line you're sailing with, you're gonna get a different response for this. My expectation is that the food was gonna be friggin' incredible. And my reality on this is that the food was even better than what my expectation was. Because I tell you, when I went to Florida two weeks later, I was like, oh God, this has got no taste. Because <laughs> we had been on the cruise and the food was like, it was amazing. It was really good. Me and Con on huge eat outs. People, we 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 kind of like you know we like to make our own food in. We're not. We're, we're, I say we're not huge takeaway people. We used to be huge takeaway people. You know we're kind of like just eating in. So when we go out and we're getting you know dined on in a restaurant, it feels special. And two weeks of that on a cruise, oh sign me up to that every single day. My expectation was that the food was gonna be good anyway. The reality was the food was amazing. Now I'm talking about P&O cruises here. I'm not talking about other cruise lines. I know those are the cruise lines that might not have the best, you know, might not have as good food as P&O, but the food on P&O was amazing. The, um, the options of food for vegetarians was brilliant. The waiters and the waitresses really Honestly, because I was on a low carb diet back then, because I was going to Florida, and when I go to Florida, I'm always worried about my weight. Um, I really wanted to make sure that I followed my low carb diet, and it lasted about five days. But for the five days that lasted for guys on that ship, the staff what, were amazing. They really, really helped me. They kept, you know, every time I said, "Can I have a steak?" But can I instead of instead of like there was one night. Um, in fact, it was like pretty much every night they offered this. Um, the the uh, the waiter said, "Well, instead of having um, chips, would you like an extra piece of steak and some some more veg?" And I was like, "That would be absolutely amazing." And they were really happy on doing that. There was no, "Oh, this is the menu. Just take, don't eat what you don't want to eat or anything like that." It was just so lovely. Staff were amazing. I know for a lot of people, the food is a huge important part because you've got it obviously when you 
you know, like I travel with a vegetarian, but he's not just a vegetarian, he's a really fussy eater as well. So for me, like when booking a cruise or going on holiday, we always have to like look at the menus in advance to make sure that it meets his requirements. So I totally understand that food's a big thing for people. Um, what I would recommend is before you book a cruise, you can go online and look at the menus. So go online, have a look at the menus and just make sure that the food caters to your needs. Um, if, if you don't think it is, make sure you need to contact the cruise company because I'm sure they would, you know, be able to help you further in making sure they meet your needs. Because, like I say, the P&O for me, who we booked our cruise with, were absolutely amazing with us. On, on, you know, when I asked, I had so many. There were so many times I had so many different questions in regards to. Do you do this? Do you do that? Do you do this? Do you do that? I think at one point they were getting sick of me ringing up, but when you've not done one before, you have all these questions. And number five, guys, is a bit of a funny one. It's kind of a funny one, but it's old people. So we all have seen the news. We've all seen, you know, the thing that cruising's for old people. You know, that's where you go when you're at the later end of your life and, you know, you're quite happy just to chill on a ship and you you know, whatever. Now, I'm gonna be honest, say, when I get old and grey, sign me up to as many cruises I can go on, because I tell you, it's so relaxing. Um, however, my expectation before going was that there was gonna be no one our age, and there was gonna be a lot of older people. Reality, it's not like that at all. The amount of families that were on board our cruise was absolutely crazy. You would be surprised at the age range across the ship. You have young, old, teenagers, young adults, adults. It was such a wide variety of people. And do you know, even on our itinerary, now P&O are known for being a cruise that is more aimed at more of the older guests. You know, there's a lot of people that say that to me every time I talk that I've booked a P&O cruise. They tell us, oh, you should book Royal Caribbean because that's more of a, a younger audience. And so that's who they, they aim towards, like families. Honestly, guys, P&O, I don't know what, obviously, this was my first cruise, so we're talking about my first cruise. I was honestly blown away by the age variety on that ship, and I met so many people, so many people that I still talk to now. And in the words of Emma Cruises, <laughs> her famous saying is, cruise is not just for old people. And that is so true, it isn't. Cruise is not just for old people, literally, it can be any age. There's so many people that have messaged me in the past and have said like, oh, I'm surprised you enjoyed your cruise, because like, you know, there's a lot of older people on cruises. Like, was there anyone your age? And was, uh, honestly, like, like, the reality to expectation of this is gonna blow you away, guys, when you have your first cruise, because there's so many younger people on board. Anyway, guys, I hope that has helped you out with the expectation versus reality of cruising. There's so many more things that I could have talked about, and there's so many things that you guys will probably have questions about, so feel free to let me know in the comments. Um, the main things we touched upon is cost, kids, kids clubs for the kids, uh, formal evenings and food. But if there's anything else that you would like me to touch upon, let me know in the comments. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video guys. See you soon. Bye.